the end of our official program. I'm going to give the uh, the chef in charge uh, or the management of the chefs in charge a chance to speak, but I'm going to take one minute for myself. Because <laughs> I can. <laughs> and I just wanted to say, it's because it is International Women's Day and I am moved by your speech and uh, as I kind of spoke about a little bit earlier, how we're all affected, it's International Women's Day and I feel that I would be a little bit remiss to not mention mm -hmm. the woman who is the most important person in my life and that is my own mother. Cool. And my mother, and here we go. now is struggling with Alzheimer's. She's 87 and she lives in Vegas and it's okay. It's all right. She's, she led a long, full, hard life and you're going to hear a few seconds about that. Yeah, I told you a minute. Okay, a few seconds about that, but it's very powerful because my mother actually was a very powerful woman when she was actively doing things in her life. She raised three children. Um, my mother started off as a home ec teacher. She was married to my father, who unfortunately was um, did a lot of drinking, a lot of womanizing, and um, she had to leave him at some point. Um, when she couldn't take anymore, she took her three children to the west, uh, Midwest in the United States, out of New York City, and she had three <coughs> things that she wanted us to accomplish. She, or not three things, she had us, she wanted us to be educated because education had been her way out. She went from being a home ec teacher to becoming a counselor educator and she became the very first African American ever to get a PhD from Indiana State University in the United States and that was in the 70s. So. Also was one of the first African American commissioners of corrections. So yes, my mother ran the prison system for New York, which is larger than Denmark and Sweden and Norway. Um, she was a badass. <laughs> but she very very quiet, very very humble. Really, you would not think we were related. Um, <laughs> true story. Um, she also started. She took over uh, the National Migrant. Association. Uh, she was the president of the National Migrant Association and was one of the my first forays into public speaking when I was about 15. And that's just a little bit of what my mother accomplished that might be historic history book like viable. But the most important thing for anyone who had ever met my mother or who would meet my mother is she is the nicest, kindest, and much like your mother. I would have discussions, things about family or friends or something of falling out, and then I would say, you know, want my mother to take my side, and she would be talking about an ex or something, and she was like, I, I, my problem is not, his problem is not with me, my problem is not with him, you have an issue, but I'm sorry, that's your problem, not my problem, you know, we're all equal, we're all able to have conversations, so she was very, very amazing to be able to do that, and even now, even though she doesn't know who she is in the same way that she was and cool. and she's lost to me in terms of that person, she's still a very, very nice woman and a very, very friendly woman and when you go to the place where she lives now, she is the first to, when someone comes in and they're sad and they're confused because their loved one has left them there and she will go over and start counseling them because that's what she does. Um, she likes to be busy and she likes to be in charge, but in the most loving and fantastic way. So I tell you this story not to just share with you about my mother, but it's to, whether it's your mother, because everyone unfortunately doesn't have that, that, that feeling about their parents um, or their, their mother, but someone in your life has made that impact. And when I say someone, read woman um, in this particular scenario. And I would like you to all just take a second to honor an important woman who's in your life. Because while we have been speaking about women who have made their face <coughs> visible, have made their voice visible, we know who they are. They have become famous because they've written amazing books. They have worked causes. They have famous parents. 
They have worked on different projects. The thing is about all of you in this in this room, much like what Kareen said and many of the other speakers, you all have a part to play. You all have a chance. And the name nobody knew who Nelson Mandela was, who Wendy Mandela was until they became Nelson and Wendy Mandela. Nobody knew who Zinzi was until she made her voice out. Sarah Omar, and I can go on and on, but because I told you it was going to be a minute and now <laughs> it's three, I will say, think about that. You may not have reached your goal for what you want your life to be about, but you have a choice right now. What do you want it to be? And go for it, full gusto, none apologetically. Whether you're a man or a woman, you can do it. And you have people in this room, chances are, who can help you do it. So yeah. I will say, um, on behalf of Crossing Borders, I believe I can actually say this, uh, that all of you had a chance to sign up with us. If you sign up, we'll get the information disseminated about the websites and the contacts so that we can further the dialogue, because I am yeah. sure that is the whole purpose of being here today, not to just be one day out of the year yeah. to celebrate. It's to begin a movement where we all use our voices and move forward. Correct, Garbo? Did I summarize that well? All right, so. And now we're going to be able to get to the food. So first, oh. Karen's going to explain a little something-something. Thank you. There you go. Karen, oh, you didn't go. <laughs>